so my name is Yura Karpish, and today I'm here to talk about money. Uh, well, probably most of you know that uh, our current financial system doesn't work very well. Uh, we, we, we had the financial crisis, debt crisis. I have written a book about the, this topic, and I blame mostly money, so that's the topic of my today's talk. At the beginning, I would like to dwell a little bit on why I think that our current money is bad. Then I would uh, like to tackle like what's happening right now in financial system, and then uh, at the end, I would like to propose some reforms or talk about possible reforms and what I think will happen in the future, and and that that would be that. Yeah. Like so so. What I don't like about the money I earned from selling my book, like, it's nice money, you can buy stuff, uh, it's, it's always fun to spend money. Well, I don't blame to, uh, I don't mean it like the money itself is bad, but our current money is bad. Like, it's because of three, mainly three things. Like, the first one is we have monopoly money. Like, we, I cannot produce money, like, legally, and and offer it to, my, to customers. For example, I cannot persuade Slovaks to use Karpish euros, euros that would be backed by gold, silver, or whatever. So that's why it's called fiat money. Like we are, uh, we are forced to use this money. Second, second characteristic of today's money that I don't like very much is that it's very easy to create new money. Like. Uh, in the old times, in, in the good old times, like it was quite difficult to produce new money, to produce new ounce of gold. You had to uh, pollute uh, forests, kill some people, and dig the gold out of the out of the ground. Right now, it's quite easy. Like, for example, take quantitative easing program of ECB. Like, there is a guy sitting behind the computer who creates like 80 billion new euros every month. Like, just just by typing the number into the computer, he creates 80 billion of, of new money that he can spend the, in the economy. He can buy things, he can buy bonds, and whatever he, he wants. And this is like too easy, in my opinion, because like if it's hard to create new money, then it, if it's hard to steal value from users of this money. So this is the sec second thing. And the third one is, uh, more related to the banking system as it is, like the fractional reserve system, as it works right now, forces the whole sector into risky behavior. And from time to time, like it takes, I don't know, sometimes 10 years, sometimes 20 years, we have to pay the price for this risky behavior. Like we have to save the banks, uh, we have to pay their bills, and they keep the, the profits. So, so we have created, by the way, of granting this privilege of uh, fractional reserve banking to the financial sector, some rents that I think we should take back and we, we shouldn't rescue them every time. On this graph, you can see like the de development of money through time. Like in good old days, like this is what some economists call uh, classical gold standard. I, I know. Don't, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not proposing that it was perfect or that I would like to come, go back to the uh, gold standard or whatever, but in my, opinion, in my opinion, it worked much better than the current system. Because like, if I wanted to save, if I entered the labor market, for example, in, 19, in 1790, and I wanted to save for my pension, the only thing I had to do is to keep my coins somewhere safe, and I didn't have to invest it, I didn't have to look for new, new opportunities, and after 40 years, the prices were the same, or almost the same. So this is what I understand under, under stable prices, like they don't really change for hundreds, hundreds of years. Here, Fed was created, and you can immediately see that the inflation, like the prices start to rise, uh, every year by average 3%, and here, this is 1970, 1971, and this is the birthday of the proper bad money, because like, that, that's the time that the Nixon announced that the dollar is not backed by any gold anymore, and you can see that now the real depreciation started. 
And this is like this time, like from 71, this is a really bad money system because like uh, before at least the US dollar was formally linked to, to, to gold. So there was some kind of uh, hindrance in, in uh, creating new money, but not anymore. Why is it important? Why is it important for the economy to have good money? Because my currently most popular metaphor, what money is, is that money is memory. Money is that base for, for the society. Because money is like where is written what, who owns what. Like uh, in money, you have prices that coordinate the whole economy. And if you mess up this database, if you play with it, if you create fake money, new money, then you uh, create illusions, then you take away values from people that create it. So you really mess up the whole, whole economy. The best case for, for, for this argument is the last financial crisis. Like, some people pretend that the bubble was something that just happened, that like, we, we couldn't do anything. This was these stupid speculators that just pushed money into uh, housing and they didn't see any risks and that's their fault or predatory lending or predatory borrowing. But not many people, people blame money as itself. Like, and, and, in my opinion, this was the most important factor because, like, no, it didn't happen just like that. Like, they, the people in the central banks that create money, that use the money to stimulate the economy, wanted to create a new bubble. As seen in the quote of Paul Krugman, who suggested that the Alan Greenspan, the current Fed chief, creates a housing bubble. Well, they did it. Like, this is the housing prices, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this is housing prices in the United, United States. For over the last 100 years, and you can see it's indexed and it's uh, in real, real terms, so it's adjusted for inflation. But you could see that for 100 years, it was quite boring. It was around the value of 100. Well, this is the exception. This is the, there you can see the exception. There's First uh, World War and Second World War. Time were depressing at that time. But after, after the wars ended, it came back to 100. And what happened in 2000, 2001? Well, it went to 200. And it wasn't just because of these new financial instruments, because people suddenly became crazy, because capitalism uh, was deregulated, it was because central bankers wanted to create new bubble, like they created by creating new money. This is nothing new, probably not even for you, for, for, for anybody. This is, we knew that it will happen, we knew that if, you, if central bank lowers the interest rates and creates new money, you create bubbles. At least people before the Fed creation in 1912 knew and, and just warned uh, U.S. citizens before creation of the Fed that this exactly will happen, that central banks will inflate credits and will create bubbles that will bust. Because like everybody loves inflation, everybody loves creating bubbles. The state gets much more money from taxes, uh, banks earn interest rates, people feel more wealthy because like their wealth is going up either in uh, stocks or, or housing. But every bubble has to burst. Do you know who this is? That's a famous economist, Scottish economist. It's John Law, yes. So, we had bubbles even before bad money. This is from 1720, so-called Mississippi bubble. Uh, John Law had, uh, had this brilliant idea that he will create a lot of paper money and he will do fractional, fractional reserve banking. So he created more paper money than he had in deposits, in silver and gold. And by this way like of increasing money supply, he created this investment bubble in Mississippi companies investing uh, in New World. Uh, this guy was arrested, he was put in jail, uh, but now imagine, imagine this happened just in 
part of France, but now all the central banks synchronize their, their acts and they influence the, the economies of the whole developed world. So we had bubbles before, but they were much smaller and much, they cost us much less. In 2006, the central bank bankers didn't know really what happened because like the bubble grew much bigger than they expected. Uh, the aftermath was, was very, very expensive. And in my opinion, the biggest problem with central banks, well, the second biggest, the first biggest problem with central banks is that it's a state monopoly that shouldn't exist. The second biggest problem is that the people working in them think that the economy is like a machine, that you can really just control it. They, they, it's, they, they, like the, the, they like the story that they are driving a car, like you just give gas or you, you brake and you just really control what, what's happening. And in, in my opinion, like our economy or every economy is, is more like organism. Like you don't really know what will happen if you push the brakes or if you get, give gas. Because like it changes, there is uh, so-called causal density. Like you don't really understand what you are doing and what will happen afterwards. But central banks are not for decreasing unemployment. And this point I have to stress because like, it will get even more important in the future. Central banks were created to extract money from private sex sector and to give it to the state. And if you don't believe me, just study the history of the first central banks that appeared. The first one was in Sweden, the second one was in Bank of England. Here pictured as this old lady from Needle Street. This is the picture from 1797, and this is the British Prime Minister who needs some money to spend on, uh, on wars. So he comes to the central bank and empties its pockets. And this will happen in the future, in my opinion, because like right now we have a problem with high debts of, of states. We have problem with uh, too much spending and not enough taxes. And that's why the central banks are increasingly used also for fiscal purposes. It means they buy debt of states and they will continue. Let's imagine a world without central banks. Let's imagine a world where Karpish or you can produce your own money and you have to persuade people to use your money. So your money has to have a stable value and have to be, has to be uh, user-friendly. Where the states don't have the power to take, by the way, of printing money, our uh, values. And let's, pre let, let's imagine what would happen, for example, in the United States, like if there was a, if Bush has to, had to persuade his voters, let's attack evil, let's collect taxes for this war. We need $400 from every one of you, and we will kill Hussein and, and, and do the job. Well, he would, it, he, would, he would have it much, much, much more difficult. Maybe he could start a, a crowd, crowdfunding campaign for this, this project. But I think it would end much sooner than it ended uh, in, in our current uh, history, because like, the, the price went up to the $16,500 uh, per person, and he would have to take the money from people, not just by printing, printing dollars and buying, buying bonds. So, in my opinion, the bad money leads to the bigger state because, like, it doesn't... Uh, you, you, peop, normal people don't see it as you tax them with, with bad money. Like, and this, this, is, uh, this is evident from Europe. Like, do you know where France had... When, when was the last time when France had balanced, balanced budget? Like, does anyone know? Never. It happened never. Like, 35 years, France and Italy had deficit. And it's like 35 years is the time that we like, have really reliable documents about their, their budgets before nobody knows. So, so they never had balanced budget. And how is it possible? Like, if my household wouldn't balance budget for two years or three years, I would probably go to jail, but no, it's possibly in the case of states because they can print the difference. And that's why, this is the reason why Italy and France had the worst money in the Europe. So this is the reason why they wanted to create the euro to 
destroy the German, German mark that was like too strong for them. Bad money is also used for, for private sector. As you can Im imagine, I'm talking about banks. Bad money is, is used to save banks from their de depositors. Because like, if they do fractional reserve banking, it comes time when the depositors want to see their imaginary money and just run on the bank. And th th these are the times when the central bank is used because it can tr create as much reserves or, or money as it, as it wants. So it protects the financial industry. But the financial industry is paying back, paying back nicely. So that's why uh, the politicians are quite friendly towards financial sector, even though there was the biggest crisis after the World War. If you check uh, the careers of uh, financial regulators or politicians, it's quite uh, common that the people from banks come into the politics or into the regulator bodies and or after the career in politics or in central banks end up in these financial institutions. Currently, like almost over 60% of private liabilities of financial sectors are guaranteed by the state. Explicitly or implicitly. Well, this is the reason why I'm quite angry at somebody when people propose that, okay, this was capitalism's fault, like, because like we, the capitalism is not very stable, that's why, that's why we had the crisis. No, like, the state guarantees almost all financial sector liabilities. This is United States, this is not Russia. And in my opinion, that's why it cannot work. Okay, let's go for a short visit to Europe back, because this is my money, this is Euro. Uh, I didn't choose it, I was, I was forced, to, forced to use it. This is the situation, this was the situation in 2011, like, these countries like falling into the void and, and Germany mostly, sorry, mostly Germany holding them all. Italy, like this was before European Central Bank started to buy Italy bonds and saving, saving the, the country. It was exchanged for uh, pushing out Berlusconi uh, and, and that's why they started to, to buy it. Our monetary union, I, our case of bad money didn't work, so that's why we decided that we need a fiscal union, which, uh, which requires even more cooperation. I don't think it will work. I, I, I don't think that you can really pretend that we, ha we are a homogeneous uh, monetary unit where everybody respects law, everybody archives uh, financial documents at Ministry of Finance the same, this is not from Germany, as you can guess, it's from Greece, where countries are not very friendly anymore towards one another, because like, uh, there were like, uh, wealth transfers going from one country for saving another country. This is like what uh, the ex-finance minister of Greece thinks of German creditors. And this is, in my opinion, the most important chart for the future of Euro. Uh, well, I don't think Euro will survive in the long term. And this chart is the answer to why. Because France cannot, the, the country cannot balance the budget. And the, the question of long-term survival of Euro is the question, who can police France? Who can force France not to use uh, the Euro to finance its deficit? And if you persuade me that there will be some stability and growth pact or fiscal compact or two pack, six pack, as you can guess, like so many instruments and not one worked. If you persuade me that we will find a way how we can police France and force it into the balanced budget, then I will probably change my mind, but I don't think it will happen. I think Euro cannot survive if you have the uh, common credit card that is used by the states and, and used a lot. This is what happens now, like we are like, uh, re it's raining money on the European economy. Uh, our central bank chef, Mr. Draghi, like he will do whatever it takes, whatever, whatever we must, without undue delay, 
we don't give up. Like this is all promises to create new money just to save the save the countries and save the save the currency. This is how it looks on the balance sheet of European Central Bank. They are just printing money and buying stuff. I mean, uh, by stuff I mean like bonds of 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 member member, member countries. Well, this was the theory be, be, behind it. Like, let's print some money, we give it to banks, and banks will give it back to the states. And some part of it will flow also into the economy and into the private sector. Well, it doesn't work. Well, they are printing a, mon a lot of money. Like, like from the beginning of the quantitative easing, they printed already one trillion euros. And when you check loans to non-financial corporations, they, they are stagnant. Like, like no, no change. So the money flows into the state debts. It helps banks. It helps states, but it doesn't really help. Uh, economy. This is our local chart. Like they, ECB managed to fool somebody, but they managed to fool ordinary people. Like they are taking up debts, uh, they are taking out mortgages, uh, the prices of houses and apartments are going up, but the companies that employ the same people are not taking any debt anymore. Like from this group, somebody is wrong. And now the question is like, who? In my opinion, they are both wrong, but probably uh, the small guys are, are doing a bigger mistake. Why do, we have, why do we have such low interest rates? Because our central banks are doing their job. They do, they are do, they, they do what they can. Uh, for example, some people might think that the monetary stimulation is, un, is, is not so huge right now because the Fed isn't printing money as quickly as it, as, as it was like in 2009, uh, he would be mistaken because like right now, every month, almost 200 billion US dollars are printed in ECB, in Bank of Japan or in Swiss Central Bank. That's why we have a problems right now to find return. Well, every, investors, in, every investor looks, looks for uh, riskless um, <laughs> Risk plus return. Right now, we have just uh, risk without the return because, like, if you compare what you had to do, what you had to buy to get 7.5 percent in '95, it was just bonds. Right now, you have to be private equity investor. You have to own some funny, funny stocks from abroad and, and stuff. So, so right now, everything is expensive. The stocks increased by almost. 400% and central bankers don't see any inflation. That's why they are printing more and more. But maybe they should have read more Hayek because like, he was exp explaining that also asset prices are part of uh, price level. And if you create new money and pour it into the economy, it's not like water, it's more like honey. The place where you pour it in, th th there, there goes a little bump. But after some time, and nobody knows what this time is in this case, but I would guess like it's more than a year. After some time, some time also other prices start to start to increase. Let me check the time so I can move forward. What is getting more expensive are uh, bonds as well, like the the yield on bonds is, is decreasing, even the, the yields on Italian bonds are decreasing, even though the debt of Italy is increasing. And this is like quite funny, because it's easy to service debt of European countries when you have zero, zero interest rates. And right now we are, like, from historical point of view, in, uh, in record lows. And the, the big question, the question uh, for also for central bankers is, is what will happen when the interest rates start to rise. And this question, in my opinion, is the most important question for the financial system right now, because like, uh, it's easy to service Europe's debt when you pay just 1 or 2 percent. It will be much more difficult to service in when it's like 5, 7 or 8 percent. As you can see, the growth of the economy is stalling. This is like 10 years moving average. This is the Eurozone, US and Japan. As you can see, we are in, in the Europe, we are growing 
more slowly than Japan in the last 10 years. And at this time, the debts are growing. At this time, the states are growing. Like, like if you compare the size of the states at the beginning of the century up until now, then they, they grew by, by quite a lot. By growing state, you get less and less economic growth to support these increased debts. So this is my, like, uh, this is the future. Like we, in my opinion, the current state, the current financial system will have uh, huge problems with, with debt. And there, is, there are only three solutions how to solve it. One is default. Not very probable because like, it would mean that uh, the whole banking se sector would go down. Another one is more inflation and financial repression. This is more probable even though till now they cannot see the inflation in the consumer prices. And then the, the, the third and last one is that to, to extract more taxes from the, from the economy and to pay, it down, to pay the, the debts down. But it's not very probable if you have like 50% 50% tax rate. This is, in my opinion, the future. I don't think, unfortunately, I don't think there will be a collapse. Like, uh, guys, guys thinking like me were like, uh, during the financial crisis, were thinking about there will be a collapse come, uh, when everything goes down and we will build the system from scratch, like, and we will create our liberal or uh, I don't know what kind of utopia. But this is like biblical story. It doesn't happen like that in, uh, in real life. In my opinion, it's more, it will be more like this. This is a parasite living in a, inside a fish. It eats the tongue of the fish. It attaches itself on the tongue and lives with the fish happily forever. It just sucks the blood out of the fish and eats part of its food. But they live together. Well, the fish is smaller. It has lower chances of rep reproduction, but it's strong enough to support both of them. And this is my <laughs> metaphor for our financial system and capitalism. Like, right now we, are, uh, we have enough money, we are rich enough to support even this uh, kind of financial system that just creates expenses and, and we pay for it with lesser growth or, or stagnation. And this is the worst case scenar scenario, but in my opinion, this is the most probable scenario. Collapse of financial system was probably too optimistic scenario, so we have to adjust. Another point, uh, I'm not scared of hyperinflation because hyperinflation is political decision. Because like for hyperinflation, you need to hit the fiscal cliff. And all time there is, a, there is, a, uh, there is possibilities to stop high inflation uh, by backing the money with something, land, future taxes, or, or anything. Okay, enough of criticism. Like, what, what, should, what should we do? Like, what should be done? Like, how to improve the working of the, of the financial system? Well, it will be quite difficult, because like, this look into the future from 1912 is quite like what happened, what really happened. We have a financial sector and politicians like two most important groups in, in the society, two groups that hold the real power, that are pro profiting from the current system. So, like, if you think that it will reform itself, then you think that they will, like, voluntarily take down the ring, the one that rules them all. Like, do you think it's possible? Do you think it's probable? Well, not even Frodo, like, was able to take down the ring. It, it, it was gloom who had to beat it off, so I don't think it will happen. I don't see any real reforms happening like in the last five years or ten years. So the reform is not very probable. What I would like to see is just three things, like let me produce my money and offer it to people. Stop saving these financial pandas, like, like okay, let them, let them go bankrupt. Like, if, if, do, if they don't have enough capital, if, do, if they cannot produce profit, just stop saving them. This is the, like, two, second proposal for the reform. And third one is, like, if we have a contract in Carpi's money, then just force it. Like, if you, if you sue me and, then, and the contract was in Carpi's money, 
then you have to use the Carpi's money, not the funny bad money. But what can we do now? Okay, the reform is not very probable. I won't be next ECB chef anytime soon. So what can we do to help to reform the system? Well, we can organize a run on the banks. For example, Deutsche Bank right now, it's like, it's a nice target. But okay, you will take down one bank, not, maybe not even one bank because like the state will save it. Like my, my, in my opinion, it will happen also to Deutsche Bank. It, was, it will be saved by government again. So this is not the way. Another way is to try to hide from bad money, for example, in gold. Like the gold is still used like money and you can see it by comparing uh, the volume of trades in gold to other highly tradable assets. And this is like after JGB, uh, uh, Japanese bonds or, or treasuries, like the fifth most traded asset still in the world. And I think the gold is like re the refugee for, for us, like for us uh, escaping from, from bad money system. But I don't think they will allow gold to become money again. Like it was, it would be too risky. And if too many people will go into gold, they will try to uh, make it illegal again, like like it happened in 30s in in the states. This is my hope for bright future. All the people working with and talking about out and investing in Bitcoin. Uh, the technology is the only optimistic part from from my scenarios, like because I cannot predict it, because I cannot see the influence of the technology in, in the future, and it might happen, even though I don't think it's the most probable scenario, but it might happen that it will spread so quickly and it will change the environment so quickly that people will adopt it even before they make it illegal. And that's why I hope you will succeed. But I wouldn't bet on it. Okay, so this was my, uh, th these were my proposal for, for reform, but Ordinary people need some answers now, like they need to know what to do uh, about the system, how to protect themselves from, from, the, from the bad money and its influence. These are just a couple of points, like the first one is the most important, don't believe what they say. Like not many people, well, most of, well, most of the people think that the, the central bankers are there to tell you the truth. Like, uh, but if you do the exact opposite of what they tell you to do, usually you will, you will save yourself or earn some profits. Uh, there is an example of a uh, central banker from Cyprus, like two weeks before the bank closing and taxing of the deposit, he was like uh, writing letters to Financial Times that they, he, he will sue them because like they uh, printed an article about what will happen in Cyprus and he was telling people no it's not possible it's against our constitution and at the same time he was mo he was transferring his own money to the UK so so usually listen to them but do the opposite the second point is quite uh, it's quite important in Slovakia for example where people are taking on mortgages thinking that zero interest rates will last forever and there is a, it's, it's really easy to take on debt right now, but I don't think it will as easy to service it when the interest rates will, will, will rise. Another point is that states will have prob problems with debts. They will have problems with income, so they will try to increase taxes. But you cannot really tax uh, the profits anymore because like, they are too flexible. They are just escaping. Uh, the politicians and they will keep escaping because like there is anarchy of states so there is competition of states so it means that there will be always a nicer place to to hide the profits so that's why they will decide they will need to tax wealth more and especially in our countries where the current uh, housing well taxes on properties like like houses and apartments are quite low in my opinion, this is the future, like they will increase the taxes on, uh, on these things like houses, cars. And in my opinion, in, in the future, we can expect taxes on deposits as well. Well, we are almost there. We are almost 
getting negative interest rates on, on uh, bigger amounts on our deposit, but real taxes will come if the situation will get worse. Another, this is advice for younger people, like don't expect the state to pay your pension. Like in Slovakia, it's, it's well, in, if, you, if you check the numbers for Slovakia, and we have a pay-as-you-go system that people usually expect that current working people were, will pay their pension. Right now, three working people are supporting one pensioner, so it means like one-third of the pension is coming from me, for example. But when I will go, when I will be 65, this ratio will be 1.6 to 1. So, so if, I, if I should trust politicians and I, that the, I will get some pension, uh, I should think that one person or 1.6 person will pay taxes to, to pay me uh, the pension. And I don't think it's, it's really, really probable. Have some gold, well, till they make it illegal, but I think it's a good bet. I think it's a good insurance. I don't propose you buy gold for speculative purposes. Do so if you want so, but I view it more as an as a insurance. Uh, and, and that's it. This is the place where you can find some charts to, to my book, like there is some 200 of them. And I write a weekly newsletter, so if anyone is interested, just send me your email and I will send you the, the newsletter. Sorry, it's just in Slovak, but in case if anybody is interested. Okay, that's it from me, so if you have any questions, I would like to hear them. Thank you. Uh, so you're from Slovakia, um, right? Yes. Um, I'm uh, the Czech Republic and the Slovakia, uh, they used to be together and then they separated in the 90s. Um, and now we have an interesting A-B testing happening where the Czech Republic stays with the Czech crown and the Slovakia has chosen to join the euro. Yes. I have no clue about was it a good choice, was it a bad choice. Maybe. Do you have any metrics on that? <laughs> like, is it in the last six, seven years, has it, what has gone better, like minimum wage or um, all that kind of stuff? Like, is, is, is there any metric what you can say, this is going better, this is going worse? And I mean, I, I think the economy pre were pretty similar in the 90s. I, I have no clue, so um, please enlighten me. It's quite difficult, like, because like, if you, it, it differs for different groups in society. Like, if you ask for entrepreneurs or companies or pensions, pensioners, so it's, it's really difficult. I was a critic of Euro, but after the start of financial crisis, I was happy that we have the Euro. And let me tell you why. Because like, I was afraid what would happen in our own central bank after the crisis. I, I think, because like, I don't believe in independent central banks, and our central bank wasn't independent at all. And I was afraid that after the final start of the financial crisis, it would be used for fiscal purposes, like really, really badly. But then 2010 came and Trichet dis decided that they will like, uh, ignore the Lisbon Treaty and they will buy uh, bonds of member states. And then was I again unhappy to have the euro because like, what I was afraid of happened in the eurozone because they were like, supporting fiscal side of the member states. So it, it is a mixed story, but if you compare Czech Republic and Slovak Republic, I don't see a huge difference. Okay, our Minister of Finance, like, was, he was boasting, like, we have a model that shows that thanks to the euro, we grew by 10% of GDP more. But it's total bollocks, like, like you, you just, they made it up. Uh, I read the paper and it, it's like, if you want to torture, torture the data, you would come to the uh, exact opposite opinion. So it's difficult to say, I don't think the Czech crown will save Czech Republic from the mess that will happen in the Eurozone anyhow. anyhow it will d delay it a little bit, uh, but look what's happening right now. They are importing monetary policy of ECB anyhow, because like they packed their currency to the Euro. So they, they have Euro. They don't have this obligation to, to, towards this uh, ESM and ESFS and, and all these like, institutions that are saving the 
the banks and the states, but you cannot really isolate isolate yourself from the from the stuff that's happening in the European Union. So I don't have really a clear answer. But what happened is that like we we got a bit more expensive for for investors because our labor costs went a little bit up. Well, they went uh, much up and then came down after after like 2011 or 2012. Another question. And so you mentioned several times uh, the free market for money creation. Yes. And I don't know if you uh, know it, but uh, in the United States, you can actually create your own money. It's legal. You just can't misrepresent it uh, to be confused with the actual dollar. That was the problem with Liberty Dollar, right? Yeah. But if you didn't call it Guys. Liberty Dollars, if you called Guys it... Prison. So, right? so, but you can actually create your own currency and say it is backed by gold and it's perfectly legal. The problem with money is that it has a huge network effect. And until somebody else is using it, nobody else wants to use it, right? Uh, and also there is the problem of trust. How does everybody know that you actually have the gold that you claim? Uh, which is why Bitcoin is so awesome, because it is a trustless model and everybody can check exactly how many Bitcoins there are. Uh, so, I mean, but I think the free market for money is not a problem, uh, because in strictly speaking, it already exists. It's just really hard to start a successful currency, which is what Bitcoin is trying to do. So I don't know, like just FYI, you know, I just wanted to say that in the United States is a free market for money, it just doesn't really help. <laughs> well, the, there is the first condition, like, but it's not sufficient condition. Like the second one is you don't use uh, the public money, the bad money for saving the financial sector, because otherwise it doesn't make, change, doesn't make any sense to have private money because like you are taxed anyhow. The third one is like uh, it shouldn't be a legal tender. Like like the contracts should be uh, in money of your choice, not in US dollars. And this is very important because like if we are going to enter into into a contract, we will use the the weakest money. The, well, the, the one that is the final settlement money, because it doesn't make that doesn't make sense to uh, use Carpish dollar if. Yeah, I sue you and you will get dollars, US dollars anyhow. So, so these two other conditions have to be present as well to really talk about like private money because like the, and in Slovakia, I cannot do even the, the first, first step because like there is a guy, friend of mine and he created like local money. I, I don't like local money very much because the bigger money, the better money in my opinion. Uh, but he, uh, he, he, he wasn't allowed to uh, call it money. It's like it's like assets because like otherwise he would be he would have problems with uh, with the authorities. So so in Slovakia even the first condition is not fulfilled. So uh, your advice was uh, to avoid debt, but uh, yes. my question is, uh, could your advice be uh, to take a mortgage, for example, uh, with two uh, percent interest? and fix it to 10 years, could it yes. be profitable? It could, if you have the savings to pay down the loan if something goes wrong. Like, take out loans if you don't need them. If you need them, don't take, out, don't, don't, don't take them. Because like, in, in a mortgage contract, I don't know whether you read it or not, but there, are, there is small print where it stated that the bank can require, can request uh, the payment of the mortgage in 90 days usually or two weeks or one month and If you don't have the savings then if something like that happens then you are in a big trouble especially in Slovakia or in our countries where uh, in the mortgage contract is like that that you really uh, The house you bought with the mortgage uh, you owe also the, the loss on the house if the prices go down. It's not like in the United States, like you could go away from your mortgage, yes. you just left the keys uh, in the sink and just went away. In Slovakia and in other European countries, you owe the money even for the loss on the mortgage. And that's what happened in Baltic states and many, many of people living in Baltic states after the bubble uh, declared bankruptcy, like personal bankruptcy, but it means that you cannot really legally work for I don't know how many years because like they will just extract money from your pay. So many people left the country 
just because of this. And I think this is the future for us as well, because like many people making this mistake, and then they will pay down like 30 or 40 percent of the mortgage, and after the interest rate increase or or something happens, uh, they will they will have, they will have huge problem servicing this debt. So, so if you if you are a small guy needing a loan, don't don't take it. If you are a big guy, just needing some cheap financing, take it. So, uh, so okay. Uh, do you expect that uh, in next? 10 years, the inflation will be higher than 2%? <laughs> uh, yes. I'm yes. also well, so like, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because like in my world is like it's uh, if I should give you a number, if, if we should bet, I would give you like 70% probability. Like, yeah. So so that's why I'm, why I'm smiling. But you can well, maybe it will take 10 years or, or 20, but it's not very probable. Like if you, if you just take historical averages, for example, for mortgages in Slovakia. In Slovakia, in 2007, we paid in the average 7% on a mortgage. Right now, it's like around 2. And this was the good times. Do you know how much had to, had to people pay to borrow money in 98 in Slovakia? 70%. 28. If you were the lucky guy that got the money, you paid 28%. So I'm not talking about some extreme scenarios. Extreme scenario is like 30% on mortgage. So yes, I would guess it would be over 2% in 10 years. So Let's I, bet. <laughs> I hope in nine years I will have the full money to pay the uh, mortgage. <laughs> uh -huh. I hope so. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. So what do you see happening with real estate at interest rates? I'm guessing real estate collapse all across Europe. And uh, basically, that's what you're seeing, correct? In countries that are like experiencing uh, a boom thanks to the new mortgages, yes, the prices will probably correct. And it depends. Like, it depends because in some countries, there, there was uh, underinvestment for 40 years into uh, housing in Slovakia as well, but right now it feels like a little bit bubbly, like, yes, I would expect some kind of correction. Probably not in Spain. <laughs> it happened already there, or not in Ireland. Well, maybe in Ireland as well, because like in Ireland you can see that the prices are uh, rising again, but, but mostly, yes, in Germany probably as well. Well, if you, if you increase interest rates, and right now everybody thinks that interest rate will stay low for as long as we can see into the future, so yes, probably I'm making a mistake in valuing the, the housing based on this interest rate. There is a question. I'm not shorting housing, okay, so just, just <laughs> disclaimer so you know wh where my money is. Uh, if interest rates go up, I mean, there are so many people sitting in the same boat. So what do you imagine will happen politically then? Because many, many people will not be able to pay back the mortgages on the houses they have. So you predict housing prices going down and interest rates going up. There will be millions and millions of bankrupt homeowners yeah. in Europe. Well. I think that they will try to uh, hide it in state debt again, like like the, these losses that will uh, that will be realized in the financial sector. They will try to move them into the deficits and debt again. But the big question is like, is there a res are there any reserves left? Like, what's the state debt that is manageable? Like, is it over 200 percent of GDP, like in Japan? Or is it less if it happens in all countries at the same time? And it's hard guessing. It's like because like the bond markets aren't very uh, they, they they cannot really look into the far future as you could see in Greece or in other countries. Like if there is a problem, it happens fast and the interest rates start to rise quickly. So so I think they will try to again solve it by way of state help, like like using. Uh, using the central bank and using the uh, the the fiscal fiscal revenues of the state, 
but I'm not sure that there is enough space left for, for this saving of the financial se sector again. Like, in my opinion, there is some, some kind of Keynesian endpoint that, cannot u that you cannot really use the debt anymore without the bad effects on the, on the money. So. The Minsk moment. Kind of, yes. We have time for one more question or two short questions. So do you want to ask? Uh, thank you. I just had a really fast question, yes or no. Do you think that the scenario pre-2008 is repeating itself again? For, through a different market, of course. Or uh, That's all, thank you. Ye well, the scenario, like, like the, the story is always the same, just uh, what's different is the bubble, like where is the bubble? Right now I think uh, m m more important than the housing problem, like in Slovakia, Slovakia is just a small market, is the state debt problem. Like in my opinion, the biggest bubble right now is in bonds and especially in state bonds. So, so it will kind of a little bit different because like if states have problem with financing their debt then it's a much bigger problem than if banks have the problem so because like there is nobody to save the states like there is a state that can save the banks but who will save the states so, and i think it will be all the bad stuff will end in central banks like like in ecb like for example if italy has a problem with uh, financing of, it, of its debt, it will end up in the, on the ECB balance sheet, m most probably, because like, uh, that's the easiest way have to solve problems. But I don't know what will happen to the euro afterwards, because like, there is a threshold when the people don't trust the money anymore, because like, if you just misuse the central bank balance sheet enough, then I think it will show on the value of the, of the, of the currency. So. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot.